Now that you have set up the VBNG router, today we'll show you how to configure PPPoE and IPoE services on the BNG router. We'll show you how to generate all the configurations via script. First, we'll look at the network diagram so we can determine what information to put in the script. Then we'll show you how to get the script and then how to configure the interface and then modify the script parameters file to input all the network parameters and then just call the script to generate the configuration file. And then we copy the configuration and paste it to the router and then we commit the configuration. Finally, we validate the configuration with the actual device to see the VBNG router working in action. Now let's take a look at the network diagram for today's exercise. In this network, I have two physical interfaces, 10 gig 113 and 10 gig 112. 10 gig 113 is my access interface. Here I have the native untagged interface and also I configured a tagged interface with VLAN 200. This way I can accept both tagged and untagged traffic on the access interface. Here I also specified the LAN side pool from which I will be assigning IP and the default gateway to the subscribers. I also specified a QoS plan with 20 meg download and 5 meg upload for all users coming from the access interface. As for the network interface, it is directly connected to the next hub with static IP assignment. The router is also connected to an external radius server which will be used for user authentication and the user accounting. Finally, all traffic from the subscribers will be netted to the public IP shown in the diagram. Now let's log into the router and begin to config. We type flexbng to make sure all the router processes are running. Then we get to the router by typing company underscore CLI. The router comes with physical interfaces that you created during installation. We have to create all the VLAN interfaces before we can use the script to generate the configuration. You can use the command show IF management status to show what physical interfaces are available and then decide which physical interfaces the VLAN interfaces will be based on. In this exercise, we only need to create a VLAN interface 200 of physical interface 10 gig 113. Now let's see how this is done. Now let's use the command show IF management status to examine the interfaces. 10 gig 112 will be my network interface and 10 gig 113 will be my access interface. Now we tap config to get into config mode. Now we create VLAN interface 10 gig 113.200, set a description and set dot 1Q value, commit and type end to exit the configuration mode. Now let's use the command show IF management status to show the VLAN interface 10 gig 113.200 is created and up. Next, we'll get the tools which contains the script to generate the configurations. There are two ways to get the tools. One is use our download script as shown here, or the tools also distribute with our installation package. I will show you both. To get the tools, you first get the download script from the NetElastic website, and then make the download script executable, and then run the download script. Choose option 5 to download the tools and then you got the package, the tools package. Now just untar the package and uh, you got the tools folder. As mentioned earlier, the tools also comes with the installer package as shown here. So the tools folder will be located in the root folder of the installer package. Just go to the folder tools and these are the tools. Now let's open the parameters.sh file and modify it under the interface sections, we have two parameters, access interface and the network interface. For the access interface, we need to list all the access interfaces separated by space, as shown here. Next is the one section. Here we set the one interface, one IP, and the one gateway. In the LAN section, we need to set up the gateway, gateway mask, 
primary and secondary DNS. And also we need to specify the IP section, start IP address and end IP address. If you wanted to assign IP from radius instead of letting BNG to dynamically assign IP, you also needed to set section reserve to 1 instead of 0. Under the radius section, we specify the NAS IP, which it can be any IP on the BBNG router, the radius server IP, and the radius server secret. Under the QoS, you can set a download rate and upload rate. Under the local users, you can set a one local user for local authentication test. For the NAT section, you can specify the start port and the port size. You should be able to just use the default value here. Here we do need to set the switch to 1, so we can NAT everything to the 1 interface. And then we do need to change the interface to match the 1 interface name. If you wanted to NAT to a pool of public IPs, you need to set the switch to 0, and then define the public IP pool start and end addresses. Next, we select authentication type. Here you have three options, local authentication, no authentication, or radius. Since we're using radius, we'll just use the default radius here. Finally, we save the modified parameters file and back to Linux. Now let's generate the configuration. We use the script create pbng config to generate the configuration. And we choose option five, and hit yes and this is a generated configuration now let's scroll up to the top of the generated configuration and copy the entire configuration and paste into a notepad so we can examine it now let's get into the router type config to get into the config mode at this point the router is ready to accept configuration input now we copy the configuration from the notepad in its entirety and the paste into the router command line. Finally, we commit the configurations and exit the configuration mode. Now let's validate the configuration. I'm going to connect the laptop to the router to simulate an IPoE connection. I turn on debug monitor and also turn on the debug IPoE all switch so that when the IPoE connection comes in, I can see the activity printed on the screen. Now I'm connecting the laptop you will see the IPOE connection activities printed on the screen as it happens. Now let's type show SMGR session summary to show the IPOE connection is indeed established on the VBNG router. Here you can see its connection domain and its connection interface. Finally, let's use the command show SMGR session detail user to see the user session details. Here you can see the user's MAC address, the IP address, the DNS, and also the QoS plan, and other user session informations. With this, we conclude this exercise. Mm -hmm.